we go. Now the head. That doesn't work, did it? The head. Let me try a third time. The head. There we go. Okay, so last time, if you join me, we talked about what I called LTL. It's an easy way. I love analogies or metaphors. Anything that's a easy substitute for a difficult thing, that's what a metaphor is. God is a rock is not really true. You're not going to get a geologist or a historian to believe in that. But it's emotionally true. And it gives a wonderful visual that we remember. The rib cage is like a loaf of bread or a pickle barrel, or with the neck, it's like a Coke bottle. You start taking those everyday common visuals, especially because we're mainly visual creatures. 90% of our computing power uh, goes into uh, translating visual information and we retain it I forget, 80 times better than text uh, or speaking. We see it, we remember it more. So if we can come up with ideas that we can see in our mind, we're going to retain it more. We're going to take what is difficult and make it a little easier, a little accept more accessible. And there's not much more difficult to draw in the whole world than the head. So with that in mind, Let's do a quick recap of what LTL stands for. If I were to draw a super simple, and there's all sorts of ways to draw a super simple head, I'll just make the head two simple shapes, a uh, egg shape and two dimensional. I'm not even gonna attempt to do three dimensional. That's too much right now. It would confuse me, it would overwhelm me, it would try and talk me out of coming back tomorrow because it was so painful today. So I'm just going to draw a simple, not even an A, because that suggests three-dimensional, but just a ellipse. It doesn't even have to be a very good ellipse. And then I'll just do like a Halloween mask that uh, as a kid, you'd have a little cheap string that was stapled that always popped off halfway through your trick-or-treat hunt. Uh, but it's a mask of the face, shape of the skull, mask of the face. I'll do that. But it could be all sorts of things. And if we start then with that basic idea, we already have the first L. And that is, let's make this even simpler. That is the skull going back and the face going down. And as soon as I do that, and I do it imagining it without the hairstyle, whatever that might be, it might be an Elvis pompadour or something. And without the features, all the bumpy forehead, nose, barrel to mouth, chin and stuff, just simplified like that mask, Phantom of the Opera or whatever. If I think of that, then it looks like a tipped over or upside down or tipped over and upside down L. And notice that immediately when we think of the whole head as an L, then we've got a much better chance of getting it in the right position. Because we really, when we have to draw any particular two-dimensional shape, that's just one of the problems, one of the challenges. I've got to get the shape. But eventually, and hopefully immediately, I also have to get that shape in the right position. And then eventually, and hopefully immediately or soon after, I have to get it in the right proportions. See how the challenges start to stack. And then eventually, I need to turn the line into beautiful rendered tone, maybe. And then eventually, and the to-do list just grows, the overwhelm grows. The not sure which you got right. Did I screw up the shape and that's why it doesn't feel well? Or is it the position of the shape? But now I know that the skull goes back and the face goes down. And I can very quickly notice that when that face goes down, and I'll do the same thing here, and I guess I'm doing a little bit of a three-quarter. When the face goes down, I might be reversing it for you, I'm not sure. 
Uh, yeah, it looks like I am on the screen. So when the face goes down, it also tilts forward. It's not a perfectly vertical me at attention like a soldier or in the mirror shaving, which I don't do very often. It's me dropping my chin a little bit. And when I drop my chin, what would have been vertical if I cut off the features now is a bit of an angle. And this, which would be fairly horizontal, and I'm going to amend that statement in a second, is now tilted a little bit as well. And the L helps us place that in space very easily. And I don't have to worry about the proportions of the L. I can figure that out later. I can make it really long. Probably don't need to make it that long. But I can make it really long and then build the ellipse of the skull and get it more accurate, probably. Or what I like to do, more dynamic, make it more than accurate. Don't make it just scary, make it terrifying. Don't make it humorous, make it hilarious. If I'm going to do a movie, I'd rather the comedy is way too funny. The horror movie is way too scary. The romance is way too, of a, too much of a tearjerker or whatever. The shadows are way too dark. The background is way too deep. Push it in the direction it's already going, and that's a better screw-up to do. So I'm always going to try and make the process work for me when I can. So if I'm going to screw up, and I know I'm going to screw up, I do it all the time. You can ask my kids. I'm going to err to the more dynamic. I'm going to push it in whatever direction it's going. So if I notice that it's dipping a little bit, I'll dip it a lot or a little more. If I notice it's facing, I'll face it more. If I notice that shadow is soft edge, I'll make it a little softer edge or whatever. I'll push it in whatever direction, whatever idea, or as I, what I like to call them as filters, because those are strategic ideas, not just an idea. It's a filter. It's a strategic idea. I'm going to reduce the whole population of this world, of humans at least, and I could do it with aliens. Notice the alien from the Alien franchise does this, which is just an exaggeration of what our head does. The skull goes back, the face goes down, but the skull goes way back and goes up farther. Just an exaggeration of that L. So instead of a L, we get an L. If we turn that into a sailboat triangle, we'd notice that this is fairly close to this, fairly equal. Actually, I like to make this a little longer in the chin usually, whereas the alien that's going to eat us and chase us through the spaceship is more like that. It gives us great quick read on what's right. Now we can start to become our, our own best critic. Or critic's not a great word because that suggests a little bit of pain. They're, they're, uh, they're putting you down. Mentor. Fresh eyes. Pick a better, more comforting term for that. I like to have something where I've got room to make mistakes. It's more comfortable. Where I can take the more the incredibly difficult things and make them incredibly easy, or at least a little easier. Where I've got a better chance of more quickly finding the mistake and correcting it before I'm 40 hours into that beautiful rendering, realize something's out of whack. So that's going to be our process. We're going to use that L to find the skull and the face relationship. And what we'll notice when we look at most heads and the skull will, or the hairstyle will round it off, and the chin will round it off, although this will track the jaw fairly well. Eventually, we'll put all the features onto that, and we can fairly quickly move to a fairly satisfying solution to a difficult problem with a little bit of practice. And then as we get the, that basic process of going from very simple to much more and sometimes way more complicated, we can do it little step by little step. And as we work on the shape or shapes, 
we can more quickly dial in the position and more quickly find the mistake in the proportions and so on. Set yourself up for success. I call it little wins. You take something that's very difficult. A lot of things are difficult drawing the figure. A lot of things are difficult navigating our lives. Make it easy on ourselves when we can. Can't always, but we can more often. So, LTL. Now we know what the first L is. The first L is the mask of the face plus the shape of the skull. And then the T, let's go back to our idea. There was the L. I'm just going to do this to make it simpler. I use that a lot, actually. Because it's easier than drawing all of this stuff. And how do you, how much do you simplify the jawline and the hairline and stuff? That can be a little clunky, so I don't mess with it. I take two things that can be a little tricky to connect, make it one thing. Good enough. Now I'm going to add a T. The T is the center line of the features. Now, if it's a perfect profile, you will have already drawn that center line as we drew here. But if it's more of a three-quarter view, we can see a little bit of eye and eye socket here. See both lenses of the glasses. Then there's a natural center line, of course, that splits down through those features, through this, the bilateral symmetry, as they call it, of the face and the torso, not the limbs. Get rid of those. I forgot to put on the right layer. Now all I'm going to do for the T is I'm going to get the center line of the features plus the eyebrow line. Let's get rid of that. plus the eyebrow line from arch to arch, beginning to beginning, end to end, any equal landmark there. My eyes, uh, eyebrows kind of just roll over, but uh, our, uh, let me get the, if I can get my cursor to the other screen, you can see how his eyebrows arch up and the arch here is right is much more in the middle of our L L triangle shape, sailboat triangle shape, or whatever our construction for the head was, and the other arch of the eyebrow is right at the contour of that forehead. I'm going to look to there, and we'll look at some reference here in a little bit when we have time. But now I'm going to draw the center line first. I'll draw the eyebrow second because it's easier. I'm going to draw the center line parallel more or less. I might refine that choice as I get to be really good at it, but parallel to that first sign, that first uh, construction of the L or of something else, and then picking that up. And when I draw this, I'm not going to say how far is it from the back of the head or the ear or the sideburn area. I'm going to say how close is it to the far eye socket. Now it's going to end up bumping out. The forehead will bump out. Eye socket will go in. Eyelid or eyelash will bump out. Socket will go in. Cheekbone will come out. We'll go back in. The chin. It's going to bump around. Pick any common point there. And it doesn't have to be exactly right. It can be going to the, deep of the deepest part of the eye socket, and you can be off a little bit. I drew it here, it should have been here or here. That's okay, we'll correct it later. It could go to the far side of the forehead. I drew it here and it should have been here. We'll correct that later, just ballpark. Think of sculpting. We can take away a little bit of clay or we can add a little bit of clay. So don't stress about that. Setting ourselves up for success. We're trying to stay simple. And if you followed me 
at all. You know, I don't just make it simple. I try and make it as simple as I possibly can. That's what we've been doing. And yet, as characteristic as I can. Those are opposing ideas. If I make it totally characteristic, it's photorealist. If I make it totally simple, it's just a snowman head. No character at all. You have no idea if that's old or young, male, female, black or white, big or small, sad or happy. It's way too generic. So we want to balance it. I want to make it super simple, but I want to start as quickly as possible to make it feel characteristic. And so we'll build on top of that and you will come up with a simple yet characteristics formula. How simple, how characteristic. You'll come up with something, I hope, that's a little or a lot different than my choice. But we'll start in kind of the same place as I explained that and then you will play with this and get curious about it and keep developing a, a, your best simple, simplest possible shape to start. What's a little more characteristic than what Steve's doing or simpler yet than what Steve's doing or what I've been doing for my, in my own practice. So eyebrow uh, center line, that's a downstroke of the T. Now we have to do that. It's actually a lowercase T. Now I'm going to do this. Now I don't, I'm not really sure of where that eyebrow line is in proportion, but I can change it so I can, Add chin, take away chin. I can lower the eyebrow line. I can say, oh, actually, that's the eye line. The eyebrow line's up here. So I can correct it. Don't worry about it. And what I'll usually do, I don't do it in teaching very often because we want to be able to see these things that I'm drawing, but I'll ghost it out even lighter than this. And then when I get in there and start building this stuff, I realize, oh, the eyebrow line's way down here. And the chin should be forward and way up here. And then as I get more information, I can make my corrections. So don't worry about it. You can you you can scribble out those lines. Oh, let me uh silence that I thought I had. Here we go. So just do the best you can. So that's our T. And then I'm going to do one more L. Notice that once I got the first L, the whole simple silhouette of the head, you know, and it's going to be simple and not always characteristic. I mean, that's certainly the skull is not going to be there and probably in most hairstyles, although if you had a uh, ponytail up high, it might sit high to the head, but not so characteristic. We'll keep correcting that. But by getting that first L, it gave me the means to find the, the T because I just shadowed the downstroke of the features, center line of the face, and more or less with a little bit of usually tapering in towards that skinny chin, more or less parallel to that outside of the down downstroke of the L there. And then I found the eyebrow line. And now I'm going to use that eyebrow line as the connection for the next L, which will be eyebrow line to ear. We use the same line exactly in this case. And then we'll put the ear on there. And we'll notice as we're doing that, and that L might be not a right angle at all. This is not a right angle. This probably is not a right angle if it's in any kind of perspective. This is straight on at you. And same with this. And in fact, it might line up the eyebrow line on a profile or even a near profile. We're seeing just a little bit of the eye socket. Put a little bit of the nose in there so you can see it. The eyebrow line might line up with the ear. Let's see if I can find one that does that. 
this comes pretty close. Eyebrow line, eyebrow line to ear. Now I say eyebrow to ear because in my imaginary world, that's what my artwork is to me. It's a fantasy world. I'm inviting you in. When you look at my painting or my drawing inside that frame, that frame is a window into this fantasy world. Some of the rules of my world are the same as the real world, and some aren't. But in my world, all my ideal figures have eyebrows, lines, and it's the arch of the eyebrow I'm thinking of, exactly in line with the top of the ear. That's not always the case, but that's what I'm going to create for my ideal canon of beauty. The Greeks and the Romans had them. We can have them too. What's your ideal canon of beauty? So if I've got a figure where the, eye, the ears are a little higher than the eyebrow line, unless I'm doing a portrait, I'll lower them a little bit. If I've got a figure, I'm going to swing this across the other page because there's some uncropped nudes there. If I've got a figure where the ear is it's much lower than the eyebrow line, in this case it's with the, at the eye line, I'll move it up. And then if I am drawing the portraiture, because it's a portrait commission, say, then I will have constructed it off that ideal, and then I will lower very quickly where the actual ear is to correspond with his or her ear. But by aligning those, the eye line you could use, especially for the shot of Eve, the, it was the eye line, that would be fine too. But I choose the eyebrow line just because. But that gives me the other L. Now notice what we've got here. When we do that LTL, we have three dimensions without having to think of linear perspective and stress about structure and boxing things out and adding all that time. We can add all that stuff and probably will at some point, but very quickly, Just by getting the L and the T and the L. And we can't always see all of them. But if I can see the eyebrow line, there's the L. Now I'm going to do the T. Almost a perfect profile, but not quite. And notice I, I still don't quite know where the back of the head ends, where the bottom of the chin is, exactly where the ear is placed, but I'll just start it out there. And then I can take the mask of the face. I could take the eye socket. I can find any lesser structure, any smaller landmark. I could take the shadow shape. Any or all these, whatever is easier absolutely or whatever is easier situationally. In this case, it's going to be really much easier for me, I don't know about you, but for me to draw the shadow shape where the forehead bumps around that eye socket. And we'll spend time with these lesser structures, figure out how they go together. And notice I don't have to be perfectly accurate. That ear is a little lower than my construction line. And notice the head lifts up a little higher. And the jaw would also go at its own angle. Those don't have to necessarily be, be um, parallel and usually won't be. But I might find the structure by the shadow shapes, just drawing the shapes of the shadow in the linear sh uh, silhouettes of the form. I might find it by adding very specific detail. Here, for this particular model, or my ideal model, here is the hairline. There is the sideburn area, so the ear should come forward a little bit. 
not here, but here, and I'll just correct it. And oftentimes people will draw with a lighter. A lot of animators and uh, game designers, uh, comic artists will draw with a blue pencil or red pencil and they'll come over with their black pencil or the ink and they'll commit. So there's where Dracula's hairline is, let's say. And now by adding that smaller hairline, more characteristic, it was very simple. And then I made it more characteristic with the widow's peak and all the bumps and the bit of the sideburn and stuff. And getting the smaller eye socket that's bumping along the forehead and cheekbone there. Now I've taken this big structure and broken it into little pieces. And little piece by little piece, I can measure and be more comf confident of where I place certain landmarks. L, T, L, L, T. Notice the T is in perspective. And then L. Using that eyebrow line or eye line twice. And as soon as we start to get a feeling of the long axis and the short axis, the direction back and the direction down, or the width, the length, and the depth, Now we've got three dimensions. Notice those L's kind of in a sneaky way. And let's make this a little more characteristic as some of those kind of simplified mannequins, constructions of heads do. But notice as soon as I get the L, the T, And the other L, without even thinking about it, I'm set up for my structure there. Notice also what I did, and I'm going to do it even more so. How are we doing on time? Getting close. L. T. And L, L, second L, T, lowercase t. And when I let those T's go in their own direction and not stay perfect right angles, perfect penmanship L's and T's, then they start reinforcing the direction of the front plane to the side plane and the front and side plane. Uh, or top, uh, side and top plane, front and top plane. Now we're getting that box logic length width and depth, length, width, and depth, or width, width and depth, you can think of it either way. And now everything at, off this corner between the side of the face and the front of the face, the width and depth, everything over on the front gets dark. Everything underneath, say underneath the jaw, or underneath the ear gets dark. Anything that's on top gets light. And all of a sudden we can learn to render it a little bit better. But I, I kind of interrupted myself. I do that a lot. Notice that I'm drawing these lines and none of them are straight. 
So if you make them all curved, you're going to keep the life energy, the organic quality more intact. It's going to feel more true. And then as I have more time, I'll chisel away like a sculptor or add on like a sculptor and take a little bit out of here and add on this chisel away here add on that and with some practice we can quite quickly get that head placed so let me check see if that's making sense so far if so i'll do a couple quick little sketches of of reference is that making sense uh mike was nice enough to put it in uh, i always forget or usually forget uh but if you love these live streams, you want to support, you want access to all the recordings and homework and reference portfolios, usually of old masters and I think always of old masters and photo reference to do the homework with, uh, consider uh, supporting us on Patreon. We put it all over there, archived. It takes a little bit of man hours to get it up there and uh, edited. And there's not a lot of editing, just a little bit. Uh, but if you want to support, uh, hop over to Patreon. Mike put the link in the chat there and you can support. It's only eight bucks a month. Not too bad. Uh, if you prefer not to, absolutely fine. These are absolutely free. Eventually, we'll have more and more free assets. Uh, so we have a few low cost and then we have some high cost. We have our coaching program. What you saw at the beginning of this lesson uh, was a... Uh, a training I did for my high-end clients where they're paying uh, quite a bit of money, like going to college, like going to an online college, basically. So if you're interested in that, you can reach out to us about that. All right, that's my pitch done with that. Let's go on to the good stuff now. All right, so I think I have one here, a couple here. So if we look then at the real world or a snapshot of it, let's see how that works. So I'm trying to imagine the skull under the hair. I'm not going to succeed, but I can get kind of close. And however much I screw it up, I'll cover it with hair later. But I want to feel the underneath, just like I actually want to feel the body under the drapery. When I teach, uh, we've been doing actually for several weeks on drapery and costuming uh, in, in the um, coaching program. And I talk again and again about how we've got to feel the mannequin, the body underneath the drapery, underneath the tailored costuming, uh, and let that show up. Same thing here. Consider that hair costume. So it goes across but down. I'd rather it's too far down than not enough. I can always correct it later. And then the face goes down and in. There's my first L. I'm just going to do this because it's simpler. It's not as characteristic as separated, but simpler. And then I'm going to try and get the, um, the T. And you can see the center line right where the eyebrows don't come together. That's a center line. It's almost a perfect profile. And what I'm shooting for, and I won't succeed, I'll just get close. But what I'm shooting for is where the forehead comes back to begin the nose. That little landmark. I'm shooting for that. I don't have to get exactly right, as I said before, but that's what I'm aiming for. Nose comes out. Nose and the lips and teeth jut out. We have a bit of a muzzle, just not as much as a doggy. Comes back. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. Like a comic book villain, maybe a penguin or something. Nose and mouth both push out and then come back to where the lips end and the chin begins. Where the forehead ends and the nose begins and where the lips end and the chin begins. That's my construction line. That's what I'm aiming for. Again, I don't have to be all that accurate. It's just my best guess. And I'm going to draw every line, not as a straight, but as a curve. So it's not mechanical. It has a sense of 
bulging form and curving flow to give that eventual watery design that we want for our figures. And then I'm going to look to the eyebrow line. There's the T. Finishing the T. It's lowercase. And I'm going to do the last L. And that's going to go to the ear. We'll figure out perfect proportions later. And of course, they won't be perfect. They'll be simple yet characteristic versions of it. And I love it when this L is in a straight line, which it can be if it's a perfect profile. The two eyebrows, let's say the arch of the eyebrows, line up perfectly with the ear. That's like saying that I'm going to show you a box by doing that. It's not very likely to happen. In fact, it can't happen, actually. But um, it just doesn't say box, does it? It's a terrible design for a box. We only know it's a box when we get some kind of angle on it. Get a little bit to one side, a little underneath or on top. Same with a tube. There's a tube in flat perspective. Well, that doesn't look like a tube at all, does it? But if we can get a little angle on that tube, I'll give more than a little angle, but do a little angle on that tube, then it's, it screams tube. So I don't like being straight on to something. I like to be a little on top of it or a little underneath it. And notice I screwed this up. This is not what it looks like here. It's the chin's tilted in a little more than it should be. The line between the eyebrow line and the ear is probably not quite right. And here his ears sit a little high anyway. But it's a good mistake to make because it gives us a feeling that we're slightly at least slightly on top of the boxy idea of that head. And we'll take that boxy idea and start playing with it. So what I want you to do for now, since we're running out of time here, is I want you to draw your version of LTL. That was my L. Here's my T, and then here's my other L. The last L is already half done. And then I want you to, whatever that eyebrow line is, I want that chin to be the same line. Notice mine are converging a little bit. They're not perfectly in alignment. I don't care. They can be perfectly in alignment. They can be converging like it's in a linear perspective that you'd map out with strings and, and thumbtacks all over your, your bedroom as you do a college project or something. But get this bottom of the chin, which is a front plane like the eyebrow line is, like the tip of the nose, like the corners of the mouth, like the two ears are all on that same axis. So we're going to eventually get all that stuff to work with us. And then I want you to draw the same thing again. And maybe I'll stick with the same L. I'll make it simpler here to move along. But now I'm going to make this a little less horizontal and much closer to, there's my T, there's my last L. 
much closer to a straight line between the eyebrow line and the ear. And then keep playing with it. You don't have to do this every single drawing, but do it every once in a while. Do it several times in the week. So you really get an eye for how these things are relating. And don't forget that bottom. You can forget it sometimes, I did. But uh, pick that up every once in a while. And that's going to be the beginning of our construction. Make them up out of your head. Do a little ghosted line way farther than the proportions would want. Eventually we can turn these into really extreme perspectives underneath the chin and jaw. We can lose some of the information. So we're not getting the T because we're behind the head. But we could get the T idea with the back of the skull or the back of the hairstyle or where the bun or the ponytail is. But it changes things a little bit. So now I'm getting behind. How do I do that? How do I? The neck feels clunky. What's going on? Why didn't that work so well? And then we'll have to play with that idea and come up with a simple yet characteristic solution for that idea. But just keep playing with it and do the same drawing, not once or twice, five or six or eight times, let's say five to eight times. You only take a few seconds or a couple minutes, but draw it again and again. Don't erase, don't say, no, that's wrong. It should be here. You might well be right but don't make that better choice on the same drawing. Do a brand new drawing so you can compare. Is it getting better or is it getting worse? Practice, practice, practice. Now we're not drawing a head so much. We're drawing our filtered idea about the head, LTL, on that basic shape. And the LTL actually constructs that shape for us, more or less. And then from there, we can eventually get this beautifully done and start taking things. That was the reason I looked it up, if I can find it, there we go. Eventually we'll take what we've just done towards this and then we'll take that thinking towards dramatic pause. Towards this drawing or this painting. This one's mine. This is the great uh, J.C. Decker. And you can see the construction. Look at the L going back, three-quarter front view, top of the skull, front of the face. Here's the T, front of the face, center line of the face. We might we could go over here for that first L. And eyebrow line. Eyebrow line to the ear. Eyebrow line's a little higher, ears a little lower. We're a little underneath that. The center line of the face a little closer to one side of the other. So we're a little in three quarters. The chin and the, line, the corners of the mouth and the tip of the nose and both wings of the nostril and the eyeballs, eye pupils, all, and the hairline, all constructed on the same cross stroke for a T. T sets up all of the features. The L puts the 
ear in relationship to all those front facing features. And now we get the dynamic position and we can work out the likeness and we can render the detail in whatever. Look at the L. Here's the T. Here's the other L. Look at the L. Well, it's going straight back in space pretty much. We're getting the T. Here's the other L. We're a little under that because the ears are lower. Instantly knowing what that position is. Instantly try, being able to correct it when it's wrong or uh, push it when it's boring into something more dynamic. Control. Ideas give us control. So that's where we're going. And that's where we're at for today.